<sighs> Should probably get my camera. How's it going guys? My name is Yanis Strokovs and welcome back to my channel. And today I'm going to show you how I take professional photos of a motorcycle. So this uh, tutorial is going to be quite on the cheap so you don't need to go out and buy a load of crazy equipment. We're just going to be using two really shitty speed, uh, cheap speed lights that I bought off Amazon. I think they're about 18 pounds each. So not a lot of equipment. Triggers are about 15 pounds as well on Amazon and obviously my main camera, but you don't need to have this level of DSLR or mirrorless. Just any camera will do that's got a hot shoe. Um, so this location here that we've got is a woodland. So um, I've picked this location because it is middle of the day. It's about one o'clock right now and the sun is like ridiculously high so i wanted to find somewhere that's nice and shaded but we still have a nice dy dynamic shot of the bike now this bike isn't particularly the best bike to use for this scenario uh, usually i'd pick a location like this for an adventure bike or an enduro bike or a motocross bike or something similar like that but that's what I've got to play with today and that's what I'm gonna uh, do so while I take all the uh, shots I'm gonna show you what uh, what I'm doing and I'm gonna try to explain what I'm doing as best as I can as well so I've placed the bike a little bit off center to the uh, path that we've got here uh, because my style is I shoot a lot with uh, negative space now that's for two reasons one is I kind of really like it and second is most of my uh, photography is used in magazines or advertising or anything like that where um, the designer or the company will want to place a uh, text on top of that photo or in a magazine they'll have the article next uh, on, on onto the actual photo on a two-page spread for example that is uh, the best thing uh, that I find plus I kind of really like the style anyways so I'm gonna get started I'm gonna grab uh, the speed lights I'm gonna set them up and I'm gonna tell you what I'm doing and why I'm placing them where I'm placing them uh, settings on the camera I'm kind of just eyeballing it here uh, 250 uh, of a second for my shutter speed because that's my sync speed uh, we're not using high speed sync today because again we're going super cheap uh, ISO 100 and then um, aperture is about f8 that's kind of what I'm thinking uh, with this shot, but we'll see where it goes from there. So let me set up my speed lights and we'll take it from there. So like I said, these are really, really cheap speed lights. This one is 18 pounds on Amazon. I mean, you can't go wrong. It does the job, it flashes. I mean, the power is not that great. So uh, we do have to play with our aperture a little bit, but it should do the job well enough for what we're doing today so i'm just gonna stick it on the trigger now again usually i'd use uh stands but because we're traveling on a motorbike and carrying light stands is a pain in the backside and i don't want you to be carrying light stands and uh, hurting yourself or hurting others while you follow these steps so these little uh, feet come with the uh, flashes so we're going to use those uh, the triggers again all these are newer flashes and newer triggers that I just bought uh, for the purpose of this tutorial and things that I have lying about anyways because sometimes you just have a load of random crap uh, so this one here is going to be our second light because this one is the cheaper flash so I'm going to set it to uh, one eighth power uh, again in manual and I'm going to place it about here. So what that's going to do is we're going to illuminate this area of the bike, the whole front and the front wheel. We're going to get a little nice catch light in the front rim from that light there. And then our key light, which is going to be this one here. And once I turn it on, and as well, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the beep function on this. 
Of course, there's always a plane. Always. Come on. Yeah, so this one here is gonna be our key light. So it's gonna be, we're gonna try it at half power first. So that's at one eighth power, this is at half power. Again, in manual. And this one is gonna be placed around, oh, forgot the feet. Because this one is also gonna be going a little bit further away from the bike. So this one's gonna be higher power. And this one is gonna be placed around the back quarter and that's going to illuminate the whole front of the bike here the underside the exhaust the engine covers and hopefully we're going to get a nice catch light in uh, on the engine cover as well so i'm going to put the trigger on the camera and one thing i forgot to mention we're going to be shooting at 55 mil just to uh, give us that sort of nice compression of the background because we're shooting at f8 so we don't have that much uh, depth of field uh, but we're going to be playing with uh, compression a little bit more so usually typically all of my shots are either shot at 55 mil or a 35 mil prime uh, but for this we're going to use uh, 55 mil so let's have a gander at what we have Would help if I turn the trigger on. So that is looking really good already. I'm just gonna back up a little bit. So uh, I'm shooting this on a wide angle lens as well so that uh, I can try to get everything in the shot. So I'm focusing on uh, the tank. And as you can see, um, that is already looking really good. I'm just gonna move a little bit further back. So what I tend to do is always sort of shoot at the level of the tank. So have the camera in line with the tank. That gives you a nice sort of head on shot and it looks really good uh, as well here we're a little bit on an incline so I didn't need to prop the uh, side stand up usually what I would do is get a rock or something and just prop the side stand up just so the bike's not lent over as much but you've got to be careful not to overdo it and have the bike fall over especially if you're photographing someone else's bike or it's a company's bike or anything like that uh, that is something you do not want to do so let's take a few more uh, test shots here So at the moment, our second light is a little bit too hot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring that down to uh, 1 16th and see what that gives us there. that is looking pretty sweet I could probably take down the key light by about half a stop again this is a little bit trial and error but as you saw we were pretty close in the ball, uh, ballpark figure with f8 uh, 250th and ISO 100 looking pretty good so I'm just gonna get a few different angles here so for social media obviously everything is vertical so I'm gonna grab few snaps in vertical
and then as well what we're going to do is we're going to get ridiculously low to the ground have some foliage like there we go this this looks kind of nice have that kind of in our foreground because things in the foreground always look nice so i'm just going to kick that over and having a tilty screen is a great thing so i don't need to lie on the ground or anything like that Ugh. so that's going to do it for on the location stuff so i'm going to jump into lightroom show you how i edit my photos and get them looking the way uh all my photos look uh, so yeah, let's jump into Lightroom and take it from there, guys. I'm really sorry about that beeping noise. I have no idea what that is. Anyways, I've stopped uh, at a different location just to uh, give myself a more of a editorial type shot. So we've stopped on the side of the road. Uh, settings on the camera are very similar, but at the moment I'm shooting on the 35mm lens rather than the uh, 55 uh, only because I want a bit of a wider uh, angle here. Uh, setup is exactly the same. We've got the two speed lights uh, there. And uh, I'm shooting at f4, 1 250th of a second this time uh, because the lighting here is a little bit different. Um, so let's uh, see what we get. Oh, would help if I. There we go. So at the minute, I think we can raise the, fr uh, the front light a little bit more. Right, about half a stop. So that's two clicks on these shitty speed lights. And let's see what happens now. There we go, that's much better. So we am trying to stand quite far back and get and the whole road in the, in the... There we go, that's looking really nice. Now we could... Oh, that is a nice car. Sounds fucking sweet. So I think we can even dabble at 100th of a second just to get more detail out of those trees in the back. Nah, uh, that's probably a bit too bright. So let's just go one, two, fiftieth, and an aperture of three, six. And of course, there's a car in my background. This is the biggest struggle. Well, there's a fly attacking the camera. This is the biggest struggle with uh, shots like this, is waiting for the light to be correct and then waiting for uh, the traffic to move out of the way as well. And of course, there's a car in the background shining its damn headlights at me. Right, so I'm going to try to stand as far back as I can without falling into this hedge that you can't see. There we go, that's looking pretty sweet. So I'm going to do a few ridiculously low angles. I always get like stupidly large lorries and stuff go back by when you're trying to do stuff. <sighs> that beeping, Jesus Christ, what even is it? Huh. 
Oh. Anyways, so there you have it, guys. Uh, back to the house and into Lightroom now. Uh, like I said previously, but then I decided to stop here. So yeah, into Lightroom now, and I'm going to show you how I pro uh, process these photos. All right, so now we're in Lightroom, and here's all the photos that I took today. So first off, this is kind of let me show you. This is kind of what we're gonna end up with. So I'm gonna show you how to do that now. So we're gonna head over to the develop panel and I edit all my photos from presets that I've created myself. So let me just go to the original of this photo, which is this one here. That's the raw file that we ended up with. So for this shot, I kinda want to have faded greens and things like that and I've got a dedicated preset that I've created and which is actually available uh, down in the link uh, down in the description below you can download it for free and use it so which is uh, bike 2 which is what I use quite quite regularly uh, it does darken the scene quite a lot so you do need to bump it up a little bit um, a few others that I use is bike one, which is just a very high contrasty, high saturated look. Uh, it's really nice with uh, blue skies and things like that, but it just doesn't work in this shot. What we're kind of going for. So I'm going to use this one here. So the first thing that you want to do is uh, correct the white balance because your white balance will be different to when you shoot and the white balance here is completely off as well so you can see it looks very blue very tinny not very uh, nice so I'm gonna correct the white balance uh, click an area that we kind of think is white and that kind of works uh, 56 Kelvin is kind of where it probably should be so from there on I'm just gonna bump up the exposure a little bit to about there so then we're and end up with an area here from one of the lights where we get a bit of a hot spot then the sun is just there and we can correct all, all, all these things with uh, a few adjustments so first we're going to get rid of this spot here so just going to use a gradient tool and we're going to drag it to about there just reduce that even more there we go i'm quite happy with that and we're going to do the same thing add another one just there and just reduce that ever so slightly now i like all my photos kind of to draw the eye into the in, into the bike so you know, just press enter and then we're going to add a lightened one just on this side here because those trees are looking a little bit too too dark so we're just going to bump that up ever so slightly so this is one of the ben benefits of working with uh, raw files that we you know we can tweak all of these uh, and make these adjustments so that's looking relatively good but the bike's still looking kind of flat and very kind of tinny so what we're going to do is add a radial adjustment and we're just going to pop that over the engine and the fairing and that is going to be a darkened one again ever so slightly it's very uh, very minute and i'm going to press enter press enter again and we're just going to add one more onto the front wheel just to kind of bring it out a little bit more because that light was kind of hitting it dead on about minus 11. now i'm relatively happy with that all we're going to do is click r and we're just going to crop it a little bit and again I kind of like working with negative space I think that this kind of layout works for this photo so there we go so we're just going to press P just to pick that photo photo as a flag and we're going to move on to our next shot which was uh, this one here that I picked out so this is what kind of we're going for a very low angle very high con uh, contrast look and uh, it was edited in a very sim similar way so again using my bike 2 
uh, preset. Again, uh, start off with white balance. We're going to equalize that. Then bump up the exposure ever so slightly until we're kind of happy. And there we go. Then a little radial coming in from the side there, darkening that area. Again, it kind of just draws your eye uh, in, into into the picture a little bit. And now we can see the bike's looking a little bit too bright. Uh, so, so you might like that one. Screen, my screen recorder decided to stop. So I was saying uh, you might or might not like the fact that it's very bright and very sort of punchy, but I think it's just a little bit too much. So I'm gonna use a radial adjustment again and I'm just gonna pop it all over the bike there and like that just give it a little tweak stick that on there obviously I've spent a lot more on the actual edits um, enter enter why why is the dock not going away there we go so yeah there we go and then the last thing that I did is just crop it ever so slightly so it's in the center. And then because it's vertical, we're going to use this on social media. We're going to crop it to an 810, which is the highest that Instagram allows you. And there we go. So we're just going to press P again just to flag that as our pick for when we export. And we're gonna move on to our next location, which was the side of the road. Again, very uh, similar on this one. This one, we're kind of going for a more atmospheric feel, a bit more uh, dark in this shot, because it was relatively dark. It was, it was quite cloudy. Again, this is our raw file. We didn't crop it or anything. Put the preset on, white balance again, and to be perfectly honest, it's looking pretty good. I mean, this area here is a little bit dark, there is a little bit dark, and the bike's quite bright. So, what I'm gonna do is just boost it ever so slightly till I'm happy, which is about there. I'm gonna use a radial on the bike. To dull it down ever so slightly. There we go, I'm quite happy with that one. And what I did do in this shot as well, while I add some of these radials just to lighten up those sides ever so slightly. And just darken that top down ever so slightly. I wanted to accentuate the road just there. So what I did is just grab the brush, darken and add a little bit of contrast to it as well. So we're just gonna paint that onto the road. That's probably a bit too much. But that's just gonna accentuate the road ever so slightly and just bring that up ever so slightly, bring that contrast, and there we go. So the last thing, go away, is just add a little radial at the bottom, and add the contrast, and there we have it. So we're just gonna mark that as P again, and then move on to our last one, which is a very similar shot, but the sun was shining ever so slightly. So it kind of gives it a bit more contrast, but edited in exactly the same sort of way. This is our original. Start off with the preset. So if you want to know about this preset and you want to create something very similar, it's a very basic sort of edit where you're 
bringing down our highlights, bringing up our shadows, bringing our whites and blacks down ever so slightly, adding quite a bit of clarity on this one because we kind of want it to pop and be very vibrant, adding a little bit of dehaze, a bit of vibrance, bring down the saturation, and then this is where the magic happens in the uh, tone curves here. Um, boosting up the uh, shadows just so it kind of gives it a uh, faded grainy look, but what we're what I've also done is each channel here and I can delve into these a little bit more so if your colors are looking off on your photos just uh, have a little play with these colors here and the uh, tone curves but that's what kind of what we've done again boosted the reds ever so slightly bring bringing the yellows and greens down and pretty much pop not a lot of saturation in this uh, pic uh, picture just a lot of sort of vibrance bringing out the reds of, of the bike and uh, that's about it added a little bit of a vignette and yeah so back to the edit with this um, again just correct our white balance and that sign seems to be working quite nicely for us um, same sort of deal just these sides here I'm gonna bring in and lighten quite happy with that i'm gonna darken the, the ground ever so slightly leading in i'm relatively happy with that and then just the road again just accentuate it a little bit more And uh, there we have it. Very, I mean, very, very similar. I think what I edited before was a little bit brighter. Right, so now that we're done, all we're gonna do is go up to the top here, go edit, select our flagged photos, which is just four photos. Gonna go up to export. And what I do is the way I get my photos on my phone directly is I export to a Google Drive folder and I've already named it. And just gonna make sure all of our settings are correct. And click export. Yes, overwrite that one. And there we have it guys. That is how I take and edit my photos so if you like this video make sure you give it a thumbs up if you disliked it you know what to do make sure you follow me on instagram and i'd like to see your photos edited with this uh preset so just dm them to me via instagram and i shall see you in the next video